Mike Trim designed and painted the iconic tripod that appears on the cover of Jeff Wayne's musical version of The War of the Worlds, but the album also includes a 16-page colour booklet, with Trim being one of three artists that did pictures for it. Considering all the images are of the same story, Mike's fighting machine inevitably is depicted in paintings done by the other artists as well, which is actually quite fascinating to see the same design done by multiple artists in the same project, brought to life in each of their styles, revealing the differences between them. The first contributor to join Michael Trim in this analysis is English fantasy artist Jeff Taylor, whose illustrated book for many famous fantasy writers, including J.R.R. Tolkien. Since 1991, he's painted some of the rich imagery for Games Workshop and their unique Warhammer world, in addition to painting covers for their offshoot Black Library, as well as cards for Sabretooth Games. Many years prior to that, though, he ended up actually being the most prolific artist in terms of depicting the fighting machines in the full-colour paintings included with Jeff Wayne's album, both in terms of how many tripods his images show, which is a lot, and also in terms of how many paintings he added to the album. He gets two, while the other artists only portray them in one of their images each, excluding the inclusion of Trim's sketches of the machine into the booklet. I already have a whole video specifically about Michael Trim's portrayal on the front cover, so I won't be going into much detail about that, though the image is so iconic, I don't think there's much I need to say about it here. But Taylor doesn't deviate much, I'd say, from Trim's painting. In one of them, he even has it in pretty much the same pose and angle, yet his paintings just in general are way more muted, with almost like a faded quality about them almost as though he's trying to replicate the feeling that these images truly are from the Victorian period. Which makes a lot of sense considering Jeff Wayne uses Victorian styling throughout the marketing for his album, even to this day, going as far as using authentic Victorian writing and that kind of thing to make it feel real, I guess. In that respect, I think Taylor does a good job here, you can almost imagine his pictures being like genuine Victorian sketches of the invasion. This one also nicely shows the Martian strength, toppling an entire building with a single blast of its heat ray, even from such a far distance, displaying how their power reaches far and wide, and I mean that in a metaphorical way as well as the literal sense. This sort of unsaturated look makes the tripods blend in somewhat with the scenery, while Trim has the fighting machine highlighted, the crown jewel of the cover, Taylor seems more muted in not just the colours, but also in his portrayal, having them primarily in the background almost unnoticeable. I feel like the only reason you'd notice them in this image is because it's literally full of them, you can barely look at most of the picture without seeing one. Yet, even then, they kind of feel obscured in some way. Which is perhaps the point though, this is of the ending when the machines are still and powerless, so perhaps that's why they're viewed in this sort of unimportant light, and from an angle that looks down on them. These once terrifying entities, now insignificant, being dwarfed in this image by the bird pecking out the red flesh of the dead Martians inside. I really like the way Taylor gives us not one, but two instances of seeing the windows smashed, revealing in a subtle way the once living creatures inside these machines. I also noticed that this seems, I think, to be showing the windows of the machine up close, where the compound eye texture can be seen clearly, the only artist, in my opinion, that does show this, at least with such clarity, which is a pretty neat detail that took me a while to realise. The third and final artist, on the other hand, has gone with a very stylistically different approach. Peter Goodfellow, known for his landscape pictures, really kicked off his career in the early 1970s as a freelancer, illustrating book jackets, with the first one being Arthur C. Clarke's Tales from the White Heart. 
He quickly established himself as one of Europe's leading illustrators in the field of book covers, package design, and advertising. Interestingly, I noticed both Peter Goodfellow and Jeff Taylor would end up illustrating books by science fiction writer Philip K. Dick, which is quite funny. The youngest of the three artists, Goodfellow was only about 26 years old, I think, when he contributed the works Horsell Common and Parson Nathaniel to Jeff Wayne's musical version of The War of the Worlds. It's so simple, yet stylistic. That's the primary word that comes to mind. It's like a Soviet poster or something. Seems like it's more symbolic than anything. The most striking thing about this image, perhaps, are the stances of the tripods, which are vastly different from either of the other artists. Goodfellow portrays them as being far more angular, which gives them such a fascinating appearance to me, perhaps as though they're making wide sweeping movements. This, along with the way they're stacked on top of each other, reminds me greatly of Warwick Goebel's original depictions, which some might argue that that's not exactly a compliment, but I actually really liked the way Goebel layered the tripods in his work. I just thought it was very stylistic and interesting, and I feel like Goodfellow is mimicking that somewhat, whether intentionally or unintentionally. Plus, the movement of the fighting machines in the book is described in a very vivid and dramatic manner, with them striding now across the heather, or resembling a milking stool tilted and bowled violently along the ground, which is kind of an odd description, and I think this image captures that oddness somewhat. Like, that's not a natural stance, I feel, so it suggests an alienness to the way they move. Even the way they're so close together, and it almost looks like a repeated pattern of them at first glance, until you notice that the ones at the back are facing different positions. It's just very fascinating. This one in the background is so ominous, like it takes you a while as you're looking at the image, where you're probably primarily focused on taking in what's going on over here. Then, as you continue looking, you realise, oh wait, the tripods aren't actually all in the same pose like the first two are, and that for as long as you've been looking at them, this one's been staring right back at you this entire time. It's quite creepy and cleverly done, almost makes you feel genuinely like while you've been busying yourself about your various affairs, looking at the picture, you really have been watched keenly and closely by them without you noticing. This is probably the most ominous depiction of these tripods in the album, enshrouded not entirely in darkness, but enough to be so incredibly emblematic. Highlighted by their glowing green eyes that can be seen even far in the distance when only their silhouettes can be discerned. This seems to be the only depiction of them with this feature in the booklet I personally think is probably my favourite portrayal of their eyes. Not to mention, it seems like this stuck, as the new generation version I believe primarily deploys these luminescent eyes as well, although ironically not in the remake of this picture for some reason. It's clear from the incredibly skillful sketches by Mike Trim, the designer of these tripods, that he really nails down the mechanical aspect of the machines. But Peter Goodfellow injects such an incredible alien quality into them. This stark contrast is shown further by the way Trim so brilliantly notates how the fighting machines use ball-jointed microphone-style platforms to stand. While Goodfellow doesn't bother showing this and simply has them essentially on stilts, adding to the unnatural and odd feeling to them. Not to mention, Trim as well as Taylor portray the heat ray as though it's the turret of a machine gun or a blaster, it looks like a proper, imaginable weapon. While Goodfellow seems to indulge further in its mosquito inspiration by making it look incredibly sharp, instantly telling the viewer how dangerous it is, and it makes these machines look so menacing. All three artists, Peter Goodfellow, Jeff Taylor, and Michael Trim, all used their talents so brilliantly with each of their unique styles and imaginations to bring the tripods as well as the rest of their artwork to life. 
as shown in Jeff Wayne's musical version of The War of the Worlds.